so welcome back dear students previously we had uh, discussed about the plasmids and the phage vectors and in this session we will be discussing an overview of the cosmids as well as the yak as well as the back vectors so what is a cosmid a cosmid as we know it is a vector itself which is a cross between a a phage vector and a plasmid vector the cosmids they have a circular double stranded dna and they contain the cos sites of the phage vector uh, so what happens because they have the cos sites of the phage vectors they can be packaged into phage heads and they also carry more dna than the plasmid and can ma be maintained and manipulated as a plasmid so it is the cosmid is a hybrid between the plasmid and the phage vector and if you want to clone dna into the cosmid or uh, you can what happens you can uh, prepare cuts using the restriction endonucleases and you can see that uh, you can after incorporating into the dna into the cosmid they will be linked together or they will be bound together and it can propagate in the host cell as just like a plasmid also and cosmid as such they have approximately 5 kb dna and they can carry about 34 to 48 kb of foreign dna into the phage head so it can multiply uh, what dna as such in e coli cells as well as it can also multiply in the phage because it is having a cos site so if you want to propagate this particular dna in a phage you, even then you can use it because it is having a cos site now here ampicillin resistance and coli e1 this or ic these are parts of the plasmids then there is a polylinker here and the cos site is a portion of the phage phage vectors so if you go to look into this cosmids we can see that at both the ends they have the cos sites of the phage vector and they will have part of the plasmid and this is a cloned insert which we have here and uh, once they uh, into the phage they will they can they will appear as linear dna and using this phages you can what infect the e coli cells and within the e coli cells they form what circular plasmid like structures but plasmids have a drawback that they have only they can carry about only 10 kb of dna but since I, as i told you earlier every sequence between the cos sites but approximately 50 kb of dna is been present between the cos sites when um, it is been considered to be as a phage vector so here uh, we are having a part of the cos site and you are having a part of the plasmid also and the amount of dna which we can put here is approximately 33 to 48 kb in the case of a cosmid vector so you take your recombinant here uh, package it into the lambda heads and then such phage cells are being uh, can infect the e coli cells so instead of uh, the process of uh, transformation here we are having the process of transduction in the case of uh, when you are infecting the phage you are making an um, infect you are making a phage to infect the e coli cell and the cosmid vector is been propagated in the host cell so uh, approximately 30 to 48 kb of uh, foreign dna can be incorporated into a cosmid vector they contain both essential elements of a plasmid and lambda systems and they are extracted from the bacteria after they are been uh, incorporated that is after they are been infected on a e coli cell these cosmids are extracted from the bacteria and mixed with the uh, restriction into nucleases and the cleaved cosmids um, they are extracted from the foreign dna so what is it means uh, yeah sorry i'm talking about the portion where we are extracting cosmids that is just before this okay the cosmids uh, they are as they are they are plasmids itself because they have plasmid elements they can be propagated in the bacteria as uh, plasmids also so once you extract a cosmid from a bacteria you mix it with restriction endonuclease it and cut it 
and uh, the cleaved cosmids they are then mixed with the foreign dna which has already been cut by the same endonucleases and as a result you will get the recombinant plasmid that is what we have obtained here and this recombinant plasmid is packaged into the lambda capsids that's what we are doing here okay and uh, the recombinant cosmid is then injected into the bacterial cell where the cosmid arranges into a circle and replicates as a plasmid and it can be maintained and recovered just as a plasmid so once these um, pages will infect the e coli cells you can see that the cosmids will multiply over there they will circularize and they will just function just like a plasmid itself now in the case of uh, a higher version of this like this was i just showed you a small segment of dna now here if you are having multiple sequences of, of dna which has to be incorporated okay this is a whole genome or something like that which has been digested by saw3 so that 35 to 45 kb segments are being formed and this is a cosmic vector which we have and you have cut it using bgl2 okay and uh, bgl2 as well as uh, saw3 one will give the same type of uh, sticky ends will be formed they give sticky compatible ends with bgl2 so though they have been cut by two different enzymes they have formed sticky ends and as a result of that you can clone it and then you can put it into a phage vector different phage vector so uh, it's this is just a higher end or a higher end explanation of the previous one which we had seen over here so coming back we have got we have transfected it into e coli and coming how to identify the cells which containing the cosmic vectors you can put it into a media which is containing the antibiotic now next we're going to talk about the artificial chromosome the bacterial artificial chromosome and the yeast artificial chromosome bacterial artificial chromosome is represented as bacs and they can hold about 300 kb of dna and we know that the f factor of e coli is capable of handling large segments of dna and the recombinant bacs are introduced into e coli by electroporation and once in the cell the recombinant bac replicates like the f factor so this is somewhat similar to that of the what f factor itself so the bacterial artificial chromosome now uh, is somewhat like uh, the f factor and it can incorporate about 300 kb of dna now we have p back 108l and it has a set of regulatory genes or ic rep e with a control factor par a par b and uh, a chromo chroma phenicol resistance gene is also being present in back and the principle is almost the same i'm not going to the details of it much then you have a yeast artificial chromosome which can carry around 500 kb of dna and uh, they are designated as plasmids in bacteria when no foreign dna has been present and once the fragment has been inserted the yaks are transferred into the cells and they can replicate in a as a eukaryotic chromosome also so yaks will contain a uh, yeast centromere two yeast telomeres a bacterial origin of replication and a bacterial selectable marker so in the case of uh, when this yeast artificial chromosome is replicating in the bacteria it will function as a plasmid and when it goes when it has been transfected into the yeast cell it will function as a yeast chromosome so you are inserting dna at uh, unique restriction sites by cleavage of the plasmid and then uh, you will remove the fragment of uh, and so what happens uh, it becomes linearized and once in the cell the recombinant yeast artificial chromosome will replicate as a chromosome and uh, it can also replicate the foreign dna so you can see that in the case of yeast artificial chromosome it can replicate both in a prokaryote as well as a eukaryote also so it can be used as a what the vectors both prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic vectors 
now i guess you are clear with uh, so much and we will be just talking about some some of the enzymes which we use in in, in genetic engineering basically the most predominantly used one the restriction endonucleases and the dna ligases as we have and some cases we might use reverse transcriptase if you are using if you have to convert a rna into dna you have dna polymerase sometimes in certain reactions nucleases uh, when you need to cut dna and terminal transferases when uh, you have to transfer something at the end of a particular dna so we are concentrating more on the restriction endonucleases today and uh, dna ligases mainly because they are the most predominantly used enzymes now coming to restriction endonucleases these are enzymes which cleave dna and they have a basic sequence called uh, a recognition sequence which every restriction endonuclease will identify now every restriction endonuclease have as a specific recognition sequence now in the case of echo r1 here it recognizes a sequence called gattc and it will splice it at a particular location between g and a and this recognition sequence is also a palindrome what is a palindrome the palindromes are words or sequences that are read the same forward as well as backward and they form sticky ends what are sticky ends as we mentioned earlier they are single stranded ends that have tendency to join with each other so the restriction endonuclease is used to cut the dna and once it is cut you can incorporate the foreign dna into it and the sealing of the dna further happens with a enzyme called ligases these are all things which i guess we have mentioned but i'll just go through it they are endonucleases produced by bacteria that typically recognize specifically 4 to 8 kb sequences eight base pair sequences not kb and these are called the restriction sites and the restriction sites contain short palindromic sequences which is the same or that is the sequence is the same on each strand which is read in 5 dash to 3 dash direction and i think it's another representation of what we had already mentioned the restriction enzymes now they are been denoted by two different uh, words like echo r1 echo from the organism from which it was isolated now echo e refers towards the the genus and the species level is co and r represents the strain designation and among the strain which was the first one depending upon the order of the discovery now echo r1 was the first restriction in so endonucleases which has been discovered over here so it was given r1 so bam h1 represents it has been obtained from bacillus amylo liquefactions so like that the restriction endonucleases are been written in such a way that the first three letters have been written italicized and you put r1 or something like uh, r1 depending upon the strain from which it has been obtained and one is the order in which it was been detected you have two different ways you can obtain after restriction endonucleases either you can have blunt ends which are not uh, overlapping or which are not overlapping or sometimes you can get sticky ends also and the sticky ends are particularly useful in constructing the recombinant dna now this is when you cut with bam h1 okay uh these form sticky ends here see ga these two sequences are sticky to each other but when you are cutting it with hpa1 you can see that it's just giving a blunt cut over here so these are the results of the restriction into nuclease digestion we will be continuing in the next sessions uh, summarizing uh, the various techniques which we used for the screening of the vectors thank you for now